Ladies and gentlemen, here we are again on this humid summer, summer day, Hudson County View, live and uncut. I am your host, the latest version of the Terminator rugged and built like Schwarzenegger, John R. Heinis. And today we've got a great show for you, as always. First of all, we're going to be talking about... Uh, we're going to be talking about the appeal that was just filed by Frank Reyes. Specifically, he is looking for a new trial after being convicted of vote-by-mail charges in connection to the 2013 municipal elections. As we covered extensively, and as you know from a few shows ago, he was on the stand in court because he was being accused of paying $50 in exchange for vote-by-mails to low-income residents. And he was on the ballot as a councilman at large, and he was also pushing a referendum that would loosen the city's rent control rules. Uh, that did not pass. He did not win the election, but he still ended up being indicted on Halloween of last year. Now, his attorney wants to see them do it all again, so that would be interesting. But uh, before we get to that, we're also going to be talking about the West New York uh, Police Department having a new director, and that's Captain Mark Flores, or I should say retired Captain Mark Flores. He left the force in March of 2017. He is now back, and the new police, or I should say the current police director, will uh, still have a place in the administration, so we'll be discussing that at length as well. But a good portion of our show will be talking about Airbnb and that potential referendum in Jersey City. Joining us today is Liz DeBold Fusco, the Northeast Press Secretary with Airbnb, and we are going to sit down with her for about 15 minutes to talk about this. They just submitted 20,000 petitions just a couple hours ago, so we have a lot to talk about there. So we're not going to waste a lot of time today. We're going to uh, take a message from our sponsor, and then we'll be back with Liz. We'll see you guys in just a hot second. It takes more than a state-of-the-art medical facility to make a great hospital. It takes a team of dedicated medical professionals. That's the Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital. Medical teams consisting of New Jersey's top doctors, magnet award-winning nurses, and accomplished hospital associates, all committed to your good health. That's what you have at the Jersey City Medical Center. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. Visit us on the web at BarnabasHealth.org. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path Subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. Hello again. Hudson County View, live and uncut. I'm your host, John R. Heides, and today, as promised, we are here with Airbnb Northeast Press Secretary Liz DeBold Fusco. Uh, Liz, thanks for coming in on short notice. Thank Very you. Very much appreciated. Thank you for having me. Of course. So uh, just this morning, as I uh, mentioned earlier, you guys dropped off 20,000 petitions. You needed about 6,700. So obviously we need to see those uh, certified by City Clerk Robert Byrd. But uh, it looks like it's, this referendum is going to happen. I think I'm pretty confident in saying that. So just tell us a little bit about the process and why you thought that these changes made by the council last month were really needed to get at least one uh, second look, a new pair of eyes on them. Yeah, just to clarify, we dropped off 20,000 uh, petitions with 20,000 signatures. We dropped off about 
2,000 petitions in total. We needed about six, uh, 6,700 uh, signatures. Sure. So yeah, I mean, you know, look, our, our short-term rental community launched this petition, it launched this referendum campaign about three weeks ago because they just felt that this process by which this ordinance was passed was overtly political, deeply opaque, did not really have enough input from the short-term rental community that is going to be so deeply impacted by this ordinance, and they wanted to bring it out to the people of Jersey City, many of whom use Airbnb, maybe small business owners who rely on the tourism economy being in their communities, many of whom are their employees, whether they're cleaners, property man managers, so on and so forth, uh, and uh, will all, as a result, be impacted by this ordinance. And so, you know, today they again submitted petitions with over 20,000 signatures, and that is truly, I think, speaks to the the depth of the support for the short-term rental community that we have seen over the past three weeks. All right, so now when this was passed, uh, like you said, just under a month ago, we saw Mayor Fulop and Councilman Solomon and Councilwoman Prinzare say, you know, this is actually a good update on what was happened in 2015 because this will allow the city to have some regulations. And they basically, in short, were saying that there was just really no control over what was happening and it was time to uh, pull the reins in a little bit. So why did you guys not agree with their perspective on this? Yeah, I want to be really clear because I think there's been some misinformation about this. Um, Airbnb and I would say, I'll speak on behalf of the thousands of members of the short-term rental community, very much support regulation. In fact, I have personally had conversations with the mayor and with many council members, and I know that members of our short-term rental community have also had many conversations with all of the various council members proposing regulations that would provide for you know reasonable and fair restrictions on the short-term rental community but would not effectively create such onerous restrictions that the short-term rental economy would effectively be ended in Jersey City. Now the first, for whatever reason those regulations were not received well and the input from the short-term rental community was not included in this final ordinance but you know I, I just want to be clear no one's saying no regulations. What I think we're saying here, and I was very clear about this when we turned in the petitions today, what we're saying to the mayor and to the city council is let's start over. Let's work together in order to finally find that path forward for reasonable, comprehensive regulations of short-term rentals that will still allow this community and the residents who rely on it to be able to serve, really, the city, Jersey City, and ensure that tourism can continue to happen throughout the city and not just in the downtown area. Sure. So now this new law that's on the books, uh, if you had to pick just one or two things that are uh, problematic with the short-term rental community and why, it, what pushed you, I guess you could say, to do the uh, referendum initiative, what would you say the most problematic issues were? I mean, to be honest, there are a lot. <laughs> and I think that our, our host would say that, honestly, you know, it's really about the sum of the parts at the end of the day um, rather than any specific, specific issue. But I know one issue that we've heard about a lot is the ban on tenants. Um, and that's actually something that the local representative of the uh, NAACP, both the state conference chairman and the Jersey City branch president, spoke out against uh, earlier this week. Um, and for the simple reason is that, you know, 70% of Jersey City residents are tenants, and the vast majority of those are people of color. And so to just whole ban tenants from being able to participate in the short-term rental economy is denying short-term rentals and the economic opportunity that they cre uh, can offer and can create um, to, to deny that from uh, communities of color and to deny that from Jersey City residents who might really benefit from the supplemental income of sharing their uh, sharing a room in their apartment or who may have even signed leases multi-year leases under the under you know with the understanding that they would be able to share a room in that apartment and be able to supplement their rent that they're now not going to be able to do that and not going to be able to do that anymore and that could really you know potentially lead to eviction or force them to leave Jersey City altogether so I think that of all the provisions, that's one of the provisions that we have the most serious problems with and that others have really expressed serious reservations about. But altogether, again, our belief is that this ordinance is just not going, does not prescribe for a way that the short-term rentals can continue in Jersey City in any reasonable way. Uh, and we think that we just need to start over and find a real path forward, working together to find a real path forward for the industry. All right, so Liz, as you're aware, uh, a lot of people bickering on social media about this, uh, of course. I mean, that's what it's for, right? Yep. Um, so anyway, the, the point I'm trying to make is some people 
made the uh, made the accusation, the statements that they felt that the petitioning process was a bit misleading by some people collecting signatures from Airbnb. I didn't really hear any specific uh, examples from neighbors or anything like that, but I mean, would you like to respond to uh, some of those uh, statements being made out there? Yeah, I mean, certainly I haven't, I haven't heard any of those accusations. I've just heard that there have been some that have been made on social media. I haven't actually seen them myself. You know, many of our canvassers were actually uh, members of the short-term rental community who were just expressing why they support this and many others, you know, I, we believe that they were fair and, and followed any sort of reasonable guidelines for the canvassing process. Um, you know, again, for us, this campaign was about ensuring that uh, voters understood that we think there should be continued discussion about this ordinance um, and that at, we should at least have a chance for it to go to the ballot and for the people to decide on it. And I believe that that was communicated by all of our canvassers. All right, so on that point about actually getting to the ballot, November 5th, right? So obviously Jersey City's no stranger to these hot button issues, especially in the past couple years, of course, you know, the payroll tax, the Caton Monument, and there was a lot of uh, signatures, a lot of petitions handed in in those instances, and we didn't actually make it to the ballot, of course. Uh, those were resolved in other ways. So as, as we sit here today, I mean, would you be confident in saying that the plan is to see this through until, you know, we get the results after 8 p.m. on November 5th? I mean, I think there's a lot of steps in the process before that, right? Obviously, as you mentioned, the uh, petition has to be certified by the city clerk, and then it goes to the city council, and they have to decide whether or not they will repeal the ordinance or send it on to the voters. So I, I certainly don't want to project uh, anything onto the city council. They need to make the, the decision uh, as a body. Um, you know, our position, again, what we said today was that we see this as an opportunity to start over here, to again, you know, again, we do not uh, we support regulation, we just support fair regulation, common sense, comprehensive, rational regulation. And so our hope from, from at this point on would be to uh, work with the council, work with the mayor to find that path forward. That would be our, our first goal, the first goal of the community. Very good. I think that's a uh, good time to take a commercial break. Don't go anywhere. You guys don't go anywhere either. We'll be right back. Good Friends Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friends Self Storage, let us be your good friend. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. All right, and we're back, Hudson County View, live and uncut, John R. Highness, and we are with Airbnb's Liz the Bold Fusco. So, now, uh, obviously we were having a discussion just about the petition drop-off today and uh, what this will mean for the subsequent months. So, I think the, you made an interesting point that a lot of people forget in this whole process because when there is a, a petition like this one, the, it goes back to the council. So, do you know if that will be on the agenda for the next meeting? Uh, I, I'm not sure. It'll depend on um, the process um, with the clerk's office. Um, they will have to obviously review all of the petitions. Um, so it will certainly depend on that that timeline. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure when it will be back on the schedule. So it all depends on whatever the signatures are certified, right? Correct, yes. Okay. Yes. All right, an important clerical point. So beyond that, uh, so you obviously represent the whole Northeast region. I mean, what sort of, uh, what sort of things or uh, I guess happenings really in the New York City, for example, that you're seeing with Airbnb, I mean, there was some uh, friction there not too long ago, right? Yeah, so, and I, you know, New York City is sort of an interesting outlier for us um, here in that we've, you know, have for the past few years been working to, uh, you know, there was a very strict law against short-term rentals that were that was passed in 2010 sure. uh, in New York City, really before Airbnb was even, uh, you know, notable, <laughs> a notable presence in the tourism industry. Um, and since then, you know, we have been working with our local host community um, to attempt to pass common sense uh, regulations uh, in the state legislature in order to uh, update those laws, bring them into the 21st century. Uh, 
uh, you know, ensure that they reflect the fact that short-term rentals are now a very, uh, you know, very popular and are an important economic uh, option for many families in New York City. Um, and we have worked with. Uh, our community has worked with uh, two legislators in the state legislature in order to uh, introduce legislation that would achieve that. Um, so, you know, I think that's one example of how, again, we've looked to uh, pass reasonable, common sense regulations. Again, we're we're not opposed to regulation. We just want regulation that will, re you know, understandably address local concerns, but also still ensure that our community can benefit from sharing their home as they often need to do. All right, so you've mentioned uh, reasonable common sense regulations a couple times, so I think probably a good time to tell you, uh, could you could you just explain to our officials, to our residents, anyone else watching, what exactly those would be if it was up to you? Yeah, I would actually encourage you, there was an op-ed that was published in the Jersey Journal by one of our local host leaders, actually really breaking down all of the different provisions that they would support, so I would encourage anyone to go uh, and read that, because I think it's really, uh, again, really gets into the nitty-gritty of what our community supports but just sort of generally you know what we have said that we support here in Jersey City is registration simple fair registration um, we support uh, registration fees as well to ensure that the city can benefit in addition to the tax revenue that they can already already taking in from short-term rentals uh, we would support banning um, you know prohibiting short-term rentals in forms of affordable housing such as public housing mm -hmm. um, you know I think again these are just sort of the the top few things that we support. There are a number of other restrictions that we have supported and that our host outlined in that op-ed. Um, but all together, you know, I, I think that the, the interesting thing about this whole process is that I think on the merits at, at our core, you know, there are a lot of things that we can agree with the council and the mayor on as far as regulations that would make sense for our community. But we believe that the ordinance that they have passed here and that our community is opposing um, has gone too far. Uh, and is therefore extremely onerous and altogether could spell an end to the short term industry, short term rental industry here in Jersey City. All right. So, what do you think? Uh, so, what do you think that the best uh, course of action will be for them to reform this? Again, you know, look, as I mentioned, one of the. Uh, biggest gripes of the short-term rental community here has been that it did not feel as though there was significant input um, from the short-term rental community into this ordinance. It felt like it was uh, a rushed process. It felt very much like it was a rushed process. This ordinance was introduced after the con you know convening of a so-called you know short-term rental working group that did not have any host on it to uh, reflect the actual needs of the short-term rental uh, community um, and, and what they would hope to see in any sort of regulatory package. So again, I think it really is just about us all sitting down together. Uh, it sounds juvenile when you say it like that, but it's actually as simple as that. We just want to be able to sit down. We want the proposal that our uh, short-term rental community has put forward um, to be considered by the council and by the mayor um, with the hope that we can find a compromise that, again, isn't going to spell out an end to the industry, but will still provide for those reasonable regulations that I that I keep talking about. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So there were two things that I uh, remember Councilman Solomon mentioned when he was on a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, two things that he was talking about was that the landlord has to live in the uh, immediate proximity of the uh, property. And he was also talking about uh, on-site inspections that could be uh, a phone call away. Um, so, you know, obviously we don't have the ordinance in front of us, but those are two provisions, of course, in the new law, and I know that's something that you guys have expressed uh, that you don't support, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So could you talk a little bit about those? Yeah, so I think that what our concern with having uh, the concern about the res the residency requirement about having owner occupied rentals. There's sort of two concerns. First is that the the night cap for uh, owner occupied rentals. So say you have a single family house and you leave your house and you're sharing your entire home. You'd only be do that be able to do that for I believe it's uh, 60 nights uh, a year. It might be 90. I don't remember. I know it was updated at one point. Um, we think that's very little, um, and that's not enough for somebody to actually be able to make significant income 
income if they've already been, again, let's remember, short-term rentals are legal right now in Jersey City. They've been legal for four years. People have made investments. They've planned their entire financial future around being able to share their property. And to tell someone, you know, you can share your home uh, for however long you would like. If you go away, if you're traveling for work 120 nights a year, no problem. You can share it for as many nights as you would like. To then say, oh no, you can only do it for X number of nights a year. That's going to be a significant impact, have a significant impact on their finances and on their life. Um, and I think that's an example of, again, how the ordinance went too far. On, on its, you know, at, at its core, we can get behind a lot of these things, but we just uh, don't think that, again, the ordinance has gone a little bit too far um, in, uh, in the regulations that it's put in place. Very good. Liz, thank you very much again for coming on. Very informative. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for making sure you were a part of it. We are going to take another break. We'll be right back. Panapinto Properties, Jersey City. Shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office space and an address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment. Adjacent to all modes of transportation. On-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. 201-521-9000 or visit on the web at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Introducing the MyJCMC app, powered by Practice Unite. The free MyJCMC app puts the power of healthcare at your fingertips. Go to the concierge for access to referrals, scheduling, and appointments. See emergency room wait times and get directions to Jersey City Medical Center health locations. Read the latest JCMC news through their social media feed. Find a doctor and more. The My JCMC app. We belong to you. And we're back, Hudson County Review, high, live and uncut. So we are now going to talk once again about Frank Rea. I know you've heard his name a lot lately. For those of you that haven't been paying attention or perhaps just missed it, Frank Rea was a prominent developer and a longtime politico in the city of Hoboken. Back on Halloween, he was indicted on counts related to vote by mail fraud in connection to the 2013 municipal races. So after about five days of trial, which included a day and a half of deliberations last month, as we covered extensively, and as we first reported, Frank Raya was convicted by a jury of his peers at the federal courthouse in Newark, and that was in U.S. District Court. Uh, that was Judge William J. Martini. So. You know, afterwards, him and his attorney had nothing to say. Uh, his family, him, he and his family and friends left pretty quickly, and it appeared to the uh, common eye that that was probably going to be the end of it. However, there's a new wrinkle in this case. Back on July 9th, Alan Zagas, the criminal defense attorney for Rhea, filed a new order and uh, the, he's looking for a new trial. This is a motion seeking a new trial. And basically he said two crucial things in this argument. I mean, it's a very short uh, filing. It's only about three pages, but basically this is what he said. The jury's guilty verdict was against the weight of the evidence and rulings of the court of trial, which were adverse the defendant compromise the right of the defendant to due process and a fair trial. And of course he's leaving the door open for any future court filings and as well as any potential uh, rulings. And he's also filed an affidavit to uh, try to get this conviction vacated. Of course that's extremely unlikely. So he has uh, also filed a brief with Judge Martini in hopes of having 30 days to provide a actual uh, comprehensive brief as opposed to just a quick motion. Like I said just a couple pages uh, really just a few sentences. So this is very interesting because we were all under the impression, uh, and when I say we, I mean the Hudson County political class, we were all under the impression that uh, it was uh, moving on to other things. By other things, I mean the 2015 ward council races and the 2017 mayoral contest. But now it looks like the U.S. Attorney's Office is going to uh, be spending a little bit more time on Rhea. So right now, his sentencing is currently scheduled for October 3rd, and that's going to be at 10 a.m. And he currently faces a $250,000 fine and up to five years in prison. So there's a, a number of variables that could happen between now and then, but it does appear that Zegas will have his motion heard at the very least. Uh, obviously, I would have to tell you guys I would be quite surprised if we ended up doing this a second time, but you know, this is Hoboken, nothing's impossible, let's not take anything for granted and uh, we're going to wait with bated breath on uh, this filing and then subsequently on Judge Martini's ruling. So. As you guys recall, there were uh, a lot of cooperation agreements in, these, in this case. We had uh, Matt Caliccio, we had Michael Hobbs, 
and uh, there was a number of others, Freddie Frazier, and uh, it's going to be interesting if they end up being called back to the stand to testify in connection to 2015 and or 2017. But again, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Let's see what happens with uh, Frank Rea between now and October. You know, obviously uh, it, it's a long window in some senses, politically speaking it is, but uh, you know, governmentally speaking, I, I don't know if that's really a lot of time. So I imagine we're going to see this brief in short order and uh, then we'll have a rule and probably within a week after that. So we're certainly going to keep you posted. That is the latest in Hoboken. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to part with some uh, news from West New York. So just give me a moment, guys. Rama Jewelers, located in the Lyndhurst Shopping Center at 413 Valley Brook Avenue, Lyndhurst. Come for all your jeweler needs at Rama Jewelers, where you will find a fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and bracelets. Choose from one of our complete sets, our many signature items, or find the perfect engagement ring. Come on down, that's Rama Jewelers at 413 Valley Brook Ave, Lyndhurst. Call 201-939-5784 or visit us online today. It takes more than a state-of-the-art medical facility to make a great hospital. It takes a team of dedicated medical professionals. That's the Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital. Medical teams consisting of New Jersey's top doctors, Magnet award-winning nurses and accomplished hospital associates all committed to your good health. That's what you have at the Jersey City Medical Center. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. Visit us on the web at BarnabasHealth.org. Hello, Hudson County View, live and uncut. So, don't want to forget about our friends up north in West New York. Obviously, it's been pretty quiet up there ever since Gabriel Rodriguez was elected mayor with his full five-person slate. Uh, so recently, uh, that was just last Wednesday, they actually appointed a new police director. So that's going to be, as I said at the beginning of the show, Mark Flores, a police captain who retired back in March of 2017. He's going to replace the current director, of course, Robert Antelos. And according to Mayor Rodriguez, he's likely going to have a head of school security position over in the public schools, of course, in West New York. So we have a video. We're going to show you guys the clip. We're going to hear a little bit about the uh, accolades of both Flores and Antelos from none other than the mayor himself. Check it out. Uh, I wanted to, number one, uh, thank our police director, Robert Antelos, who is here. Good guy, a good friend, a good director. From the moment I was able to get the Public Safety Commission up throughout um, this transition, and now as he's moving on to uh, to bigger and better things, but still, still serving and protecting this community. And while he will not be director anymore, he still will be, will be working for our community in our department. Um, and so I wanted to thank him specifically publicly. Um, he knows how I feel about him, and I'm glad that he still will be working with us. And so once again, I wanted to thank him thank for all this service. Another product of this community who chose to stay here and make his career here in the service community. So again, please. is no stranger to this community, another product of this community, dedicated his career law enforcement to this community. And so now to have him soon to be director in a weeks uh, is will be an honor and a pleasure. I look forward to working with him. Uh, he too brings uh, a plethora of information, knowledge, wisdom in law enforcement as the direct mentors. And so we are happy to re-welcome him to the Western family, especially to the police department. Thank you more for being here tonight. Uh, thank you and your wife for, for allowing him back to West New York. You don't know how that works. <laughs> but uh, thank you for coming aboard. And we, we absolutely look forward to the good work you are doing again in West New York. Uh, with that, 